For centuries, societies have utilized torture as a means of punishment, information extraction, and deterrence. Across various cultures, numerous methods of torture have been developed and refined. Among these methods, crucifixion stands out as particularly agonizing, a technique honed by the Romans and notably used in the execution of Jesus. However, the agony of crucifixion extends beyond the mere piercing of nails through the body. There are less visible aspects of suffering that occur during crucifixion, which modern medical science has helped to illuminate. The physical reactions experienced by a person during crucifixion are far more severe and complex than one might initially understand, leading to outcomes that are deeply harrowing. Here are 10 medical aspects of crucifixion that reveal its extreme and often overlooked pain and possibly what happened to Jesus Christ on the cross medically. Number one, the victim suffocates to death. Numerous hypotheses exist about the cause of death in crucifixion. The most probable cause is that the victim eventually dies from suffocation after enduring hours or even days suspended on the cross. This is due to the body's weight exerting downward pressure on the diaphragm, making breathing difficult. To alleviate this, the crucified person would alternate between pushing up with their legs and pulling up with their wrists to relieve pressure on the diaphragm. However, as fatigue sets in, particularly in the leg muscles, the person would be forced to let their body hang, struggling for breath. This cycle would repeat until the leg muscles completely failed, resulting in the individual hanging without support and ultimately succumbing to suffocation. Number two, broken legs. In certain cases, the execution process required an expedited conclusion. This was achieved by the executioners breaking the legs of the crucified individual, typically targeting the femurs with a heavy mallet. This action rendered the person incapable of pushing upwards with their feet to aid in breathing, leading inevitably to suffocation. It is widely acknowledged that fracturing the femur is among the most excruciating experiences one can endure. The immediate physical agony of having both femurs broken simultaneously is overwhelming. Added to this is the psychological torment of sensing impending death, a prospect that is mentally distressing. Despite the intense suffering endured from prolonged crucifixion, the desire to live, rooted in human instinct, persists. The act of pushing up with the legs, though painful, is a response to this survival instinct. However, when the legs are incapacitated, the individual is forced into a passive state, unable to fend off suffocation, battling against their natural inclination to survive while confronting an inescapable demise. Number three, the nerves in the arms rub against the nails. When nails were hammered into the wrists during crucifixion, they would impale the primary nerve running through the arm. Each time the victim attempted to push upwards to facilitate breathing, this movement would cause the wrist to rotate around the nail, aggravating the nerves and triggering severe arm pain. The continuous contact of the nerve with the large nail resulted in relentless, recurring agony that the victim had to bear each time they lifted themselves to breathe. This experience could be likened to the extreme pain of having an arm amputated, followed by the insertion and twisting of a bone shard directly into the fresh wound and against the exposed nerve. Number four, skin and muscle ripped off before crucifixion. Crucifixion was a multifaceted process, starting with a brutal prelude before the actual nailing to a cross or tree. This preliminary stage involved a severe beating using a whip with nine tails, each end adorned with metal tips and bone fragments. The condemned person would be bound to a wooden block while executioners lashed their back, buttocks and legs with the whip. The bone pieces attached to the whip would deeply penetrate the flesh, tearing away skin and muscle as the whip was withdrawn. This process, known as flogging, could last an extended period and was designed to mutilate the victim to the brink of recognition stopping short of causing death. Often, the whip's tails would wrap around the body, injuring the front of the shoulders and chest, 
as well as the skull, face and neck with repeated strikes. This intense physical trauma would lead to immediate shock and significant blood loss in the victim, marking just the beginning of the gruesome ordeal of crucifixion. Number 5. Wooden Splinters Scourged the Flesh Further Following the brutal flogging with the nine-tailed whip, the victim was forced to bear the weight of a wooden beam to the crucifixion site. This beam was not a smooth, treated or finished piece of wood, but rather a rough, splintered tree trunk. As the victim carried it, the coarse surface of the wood scraped against their back, driving splinters into the freshly opened wounds. This painful interaction with the wood persisted even after the victim was nailed to the cross. Each time they shifted their weight from their feet to their arms and back again, their back would rub against the rough, splintered surface of the cross. This caused continuous, stabbing pain in the open wounds. Some splinters remained embedded in the muscles and exposed nerve endings, while others further tore open the wounds, leaving trails of blood as the victim moved. This added a relentless, excruciating dimension to the already agonizing ordeal of crucifixion. Number 6. Hypovolemic Shock The severe beating that preceded crucifixion often led to hypovolemic shock, a critical condition triggered by the loss of over 20% of the body's blood. This substantial blood loss reduces the oxygen available to the body and hampers the heart's ability to circulate blood further limiting oxygen delivery to cells. This creates a detrimental cycle that can lead to death if the condition persists. Symptoms of hypovolemic shock include nausea, excessive sweating, dizziness, confusion and fainting. Frequently, victims of crucifixion would experience vomiting, which could exacerbate their situation. In some instances, the regurgitation of bodily fluids could accelerate the process of suffocation, as the victims, already in dire respiratory distress, struggled with choking and gagging. Number 7. The Shoulders Dislocate At the beginning of the crucifixion process, the vertical post is already fixed into the ground. The condemned person is made to carry the horizontal beam to the site. Once there, the executioner nails the individual's wrists to this horizontal beam while they are still on the ground. After securing the wrists, the executioner then lifts the beam and attaches it to the vertical post. At this stage, the victim's feet are not yet nailed to the vertical beam. Without any support for their feet, the full weight of their body, once hoisted up, causes their shoulders to dislocate as they hang. This dislocation also affects the wrists, causing the body to sink lower. The arms, as a result, are stretched beyond their natural length by at least 15 centimeters, 6 inches. This overextension forces the body into a prolonged, slumped position, making the chest cavity protrude outward. While this distorted posture allows for inhalation, it significantly impedes exhalation. Consequently, carbon dioxide accumulates in the body as it cannot be effectively expelled through normal breathing. This creates a dire respiratory situation for the victim. Number 8. Cardiac Stress and Hyperventilation While suspended on the cross, the body's response to insufficient oxygen is an urge to hyperventilate. However, the crucified individual's constrained position makes proper hyperventilation impossible. As a result, the heart begins to work harder in an attempt to compensate for the oxygen deficit. This increased cardiac activity can lead to extreme cardiac stress and in some cases may even result in the heart rupturing within the chest cavity. Symptoms associated with the body's struggle to hyperventilate include fever and heightened anxiety. Fever can lead to muscle aches, exacerbating the already intense pain caused by muscle cramps and spasms from the crucifixion. The victim, enduring extreme and persistent pain, naturally experiences significant nervousness and anxiety. 
This psychological distress, combined with the body's physical responses, culminates in a level of nervous system shock and overall suffering that is beyond what most people in modern times could ever encounter. Number 9. Muscle Cramping and Spasms When someone is crucified, their knees are typically bent at an angle of 45 degrees. This position requires the individual to bear their body's weight, primarily with their thigh muscles. Holding such a position, where the knees are bent and the weight is supported by the thighs, is extremely painful even for a short duration, such as five minutes. To maintain this position for hours or even days is beyond comprehension. However, the crucified person has no choice but to endure this. They must continue to support their weight with their legs until the legs are either deliberately broken or become too exhausted to function, a process that can take days. Despite the intense pain, muscle cramping and spasms that result from this position, the instinct for survival compels them to keep resisting and to keep breathing. This is true even though the condemned person might wish for nothing more than to relax, succumb to suffocation, and thus end their suffering. Number 10. Pain in the Vital Organs Our body's vital organs typically receive oxygen through the circulation of blood, a process aided by the movement of our limbs and their interaction with gravity. However, the position on the cross disrupts this natural mechanism. The fixed positioning of the arms and legs, in combination with gravity pulling the blood downwards, hinders the proper oxygenation of vital organs. As a response, the body's organs communicate distress through the only means they have, pain. This is done through nerve pathways leading to the brain's pain centers. Consequently, in addition to the other severe forms of torture experienced on the cross, the organs deprived of adequate oxygen send intense pain signals to the brain. This contributes to the overall excruciating experience of crucifixion, as the body's vital organs internally signal their critical state to the brain. In addition to the 10 aspects of crucifixion discussed, it's crucial to understand two key points. Firstly, these events do not unfold in a sequential or orderly manner, where one finishes before the next begins. Rather, they occur concurrently, creating a compounded effect of intense physical pain and torture. The simultaneous occurrence of these torturous elements multiplies the suffering experienced by the victim. Secondly, crucifixion was a prolonged process. We covered these facts in just a few minutes, however, in some historical instances, crucifixion could extend up to 10 days. This prolonged duration greatly amplified the agony. Thus, crucifixion involved much more than the mere pain from three nails. It represented a method of execution that inflicted profound, multifaceted suffering, making it an exceptionally excruciating and protracted way to die.